What's going on internet? IG back again today. And today is going to be a requested video from the comments of Fedora 29, my Fedora 29 review, where we take a comparison or a comparative look at the two biggest Linux distributions that operate on the release schedule model. That is that each distribution works on a regular or relatively regular release cycle and, uh, and packages and the graphics stack and the kernel and everything else is uh, kind of pushed into a new release and uh, packaged together, dropped as a new ISO and then supported with updates for a certain amount of time. And so I thought it would be a fantastic opportunity with Ubuntu 18.10 and Fedora 29 coming out in very close succession to have a look at these two distributions and see the different ways that they approach things and if there is a definitive uh, better player here in terms of who does this release model business better. So buckle in, this will be an interesting video. Let's check it out. Now I did a video like this uh, not too long ago with Solus and Manjaro as they were both leading examples of what a rolling release could look like. And, uh, and so now here we are looking at Ubuntu and Fedora. And again, I'm gonna, I say this a lot in at the start of my videos, but I'm going to try to keep it brief, but bear in mind as you go into more detail, the video length does tend to blow out, but I'm gonna try. So first of all, let's talk about shared ground. And um, and just to give you a bit of background of what's going on here in terms of the visuals of what you're seeing, um, I'm gonna play around a little bit with, uh, with Ubuntu 18.10. That is what is installed on my hardware right now. It's what I've been uh, messing around with for the last few days um, in a proper hardware environment. Prior to that, it was just in a virtual machine. I thought I would give it a proper go and actually use some of these features on a daily basis and uh, so that I could give you some proper thoughts on it. And I've done the same with Fedora um, and that's uh, obviously what, what came out of the Fedora 29 review. So, first of all, let's talk about common ground between these distributions. Um, in specific to uh, Ubuntu 18.10 and Fedora 29, you've got the Linux kernel 4.18, um, and with that comes a lot of power saving features and uh, and a bit better control over hardware in terms of how much power is being used by different modules such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc, etc. Um, and also a, another common ground between Ubuntu um, 18.10 and Fedora 29 is the GNOME 3.30 uh, release with a few exceptions in Ubuntu's case because they do use uh, tweaked versions of the file manager and stuff like that to make it work for them. Uh, so that means that both uh, have experienced a lot of fixed memory leaks and overall the desktop environment that they use by default being GNOME does feel a bit snappier than it has in times past. They've also, they've also both got updated graphics stacks that uh, that again give them much better graphics performance and also in my own personal experience uh, the the handling of hybrid graphics on Ubuntu 18.10 is vastly superior to that of uh, of 18.04 and uh, and Fedora 29 I could also say the same for that as well I don't exactly know why that is I haven't really done too much research there but that's just my own personal experience right now let's spend a bit of time here in Ubuntu and uh, and then we'll jump over to the Fedora camp and uh, and review some of the things that uh, that are key distinguishing points against Ubuntu here okay so first of all one of the big things uh, one of the big stories that Ubuntu's really been pushing over these last few uh, releases has been the inclusion of snaps snap packages snap packages are I don't really need to explain what they are. You can't. You guys kind of get the idea. The idea is to be able to separate um, releases of software from the actual operating system's repositories, so that you can have up-to-date software on more stable, uh, more stable system software. At least that's the idea in in theory. Um, now, when it comes to integrating these snap packages into the uh, into the GNOME Software Center or the Ubuntu Software Center, it is basically the GNOME Software Center um, that that Fedora uses as well. They both use the same manager here to manage all the different software. But out of the box, Ubuntu is going to enable snap support with, uh, and as you can see, just by jumping into one of their app categories, you can see exactly where it's coming from. Now, the other cool thing with snap packages is that you are able to choose which uh, channel you wanna uh, go on, whether you wanna try out a development release or one that's coming up. Uh, and you can also, they make it very clear as to who's a verified 
publisher in terms of whether the publisher of the snap package is um, the person who actually develops it as opposed to uh, maybe one of the snapcraft team who might package it on behalf of the apps developer now when it comes to snap packages in and of themselves um, this is probably going to be a whole nother video maybe one day if I get around to it uh, the whole snap versus flat pack because now if we bounce over to Fedora when it comes to what they integrate into their system, it comes. It, it boils down to Flatpak, and that's what Fedora has leaned into uh, for a lot of the same reasons that Ubuntu wants to integrate Snap packages into its uh, distribution. Uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of pros here in terms of how this can solve a lot of the problems that Linux has had. Uh, not enough apps because it's too hard to package for all the different distributions. Uh, Snap and Flatpak, in theory, solve these problems better. Uh, updates, more frequent updates for those apps because it's not tied to, to a release based schedule which is very very important for distributions like Ubuntu and Fedora. Now in terms of uh, technically which one is better, I, I it's, it's hard for me to form an opinion. Bouncing back to Ubuntu, um, just for an example, check out how long it takes to open up Spotify as a snap package. This is something that really bothers me. Uh, I mean, Spotify is not a small app to begin with, but the fact that a lot of snap packages actually take quite a bit of time to open and load uh, really bothers me. And, uh, and honestly, I haven't had a varied enough experience with Flatpak to be able to definitively say if that's a problem with that or not. Um, but what I will say is that I definitely get better Flatpak theme integration and Flatpak apps feel more tied to the desktop. Uh, than just a random package just plonked on top of the computer here. So if we are looking at Ubuntu-based distributions and we look at Snap support on other Ubuntu-based releases like Elementary or Linux Mint, Snaps look awful um, because they don't have any respect for theming or anything like that. Flat packs are a little bit better integrated, but that's where I'm going to leave it because honestly the, the technicalities there get way too intense. So we're going to jump back to Ubuntu. There's a lot of stuff that Ubuntu is doing that that uh, differentiates itself and makes itself a more uh, user-friendly or a more universal uh, distribution. One of those things is uh, they've got example, for example, they've got support for uh, DLNA uh, support for communicating with streaming devices, uh, streaming bo boxes and TVs and stuff like that. And they also had plans while those plans were scrapped uh, or at least postponed. They did have plans to integrate the GS Connect or basically the, the, the KDE Connect uh, Android integration into the desktop as well. Now again, these are features that Ubuntu is going to focus on because of its desktop user base. Um, but on the other hand, Fedora is very vanilla, it's very stock GNOME, and, uh, and it provides a base for power users. And I think this is where we land on our fundamental, fundamental difference between Ubuntu and Fedora. And I guess if you were going to stop watching the video now, this is, this, is, it, it, this is the main point you need to take away, that Ubuntu is ultimately aiming at the desktop computer user, whoever and whatever he or she might want to do. They want to utilize the power of open source software and they want to utilize their own uh, incredibly wide market share support base and app platform to get as many people using uh, free software as possible. That's kind of Ubuntu's modus operandi. On the flip side, you have a product like Fedora. Fedora as a project seeks to uh, provide users, predominantly developers, with a, uh, a cutting edge but stable release that they can build their environments uh, on and they can create, uh, develop software. If I can throw around an overused term, it is a power users platform. And that's why when you look at the release notes of something like Ubuntu 18.10, they're a lot quicker to point out some of the features that are going to matter to the end user, like GNOME Disk supporting Veracrypt volumes and all of this other stuff that they have added here. But when you look at Fedora and their release notes, you can see the headlining features that get the most attention are ones that are going to suit a developer, creator, uh, power user base. Things like modularity, moving towards having an Internet of Things edition, quick plug for the Fedora Silverblue project, all of these are indicative of a distribution that exists for a much more focused 
demographic compared to something like Ubuntu. Okay, so let's talk about software sources because for Fedora, if you want to get if you want to get up to date or maybe uh, sort of fringe software, you need to use uh, RPM Fusion. You need to make use of the RPM Fusion repositories. And again, it's kind of one central repository that is pretty well updated and maintained by users of Fedora. And uh, and in some cases, even some of the uh, development team of Fedora actually uh, feed into what goes into RPM Fusion. On the other hand, on Ubuntu, you uh, you basically have PPAs. And, uh, and PPAs seemed like a great idea back in the day uh, because they were the only way that you could get up-to-date software past what was uh, or beyond what was enabled in the default repositories. Um, nowadays, PPAs do seem a little bit clunky. And, uh, and the fact, to me personally, the fact that a lot of the software that you could want for Fedora is packaged up in RPM Fusion and is mostly up to date, uh, at least moderately speaking, it's not cutting edge, but it's certainly not lagging behind. Um, I, would, I would almost give the win here to Fedora for, uh, for RPM Fusion, because honestly, I think having a centralized repository that you have more eyeballs on is more secure, it's more centralized, and, uh, and it's a lot easier to mirror those uh, those repositories and um, and be able to distribute them more effectively than having a bunch of independent uh, repositories that you have to keep adding and updating and hoping that they don't uh, fall behind. Okay, so we've talked about Snap versus Flatpaks. We've talked about PPAs versus RPM Fusion. We've talked about their different uh, the, we've talked about their different user base philosophies and how each project positions itself in the market. But I guess the the final landing question is which one would I prefer to run? And when it comes down to it at the end of the day, this is very much gonna depend on who you are and what you do. For me personally, I think I prefer the, uh, the spit and polish, just the stock standardness of a project like Fedora. What I mean by that is that when you boot up Ubuntu, you're looking at a distribution that has been tweaked and modified a little bit to suit a particular uh, user base. When you're looking at something like Fedora, you're looking at something which is basically been left alone since the, the since the base developers uh, started working on it. Now, the real world implications for that mean that uh, usually you don't have to do as much uh, quality assurance testing on something that has been left alone from upstream. Uh, when it comes down and lands in a final project, all of the QA testing can go into uh, a whole nother layer down. Whereas when you've got a distribution like Ubuntu that provides its own sort of spin on an upstream project, uh, and that can have its benefits, but oftentimes it does lead to uh, quality assurance things being left out in that next layer down. I don't know if that analogy makes any sense to you, but in terms of when I'm using each distribution, even though to me uh, GNOME Shell is still a bit sloppy in my opinion and, uh, and the performance maybe isn't quite there, but I feel like everything on Fedora 29 is, is much more uh, polished. I feel like it's uh, more coherent uh, when you start adding flat packs, when you start adding third party repositories, when you start living in the distribution, it feels like a more coherent package altogether. And it feels like it's still running the way that the developers intended it for, to run. The fact that they see Fedora as a base on which to develop your own tools, apps, websites, whatever the heck you're doing, shows that Fedora is kind of ready to take on whatever you throw at it. Uh, and again, this is all very intangible stuff, but this is just my impressions after running both of these. Whereas Ubuntu 18.10, as soon as you start adding more bits to it, you start adding snaps to it, you start kind of complicating the login maybe a little bit. Once you start throwing things around, it sort of starts to feel like it's it's getting more and more bloated and starting to slow down. And uh, and for me, that's been probably my long-standing bugbear with a lot of Ubuntu-based distributions, is that after a while, they do tend to slow down. And the more that you add to them, the more that you live in them, uh, the worse it gets. The only other thing that I'm going to mention is that uh, Ubuntu has a long-term support release. And for a lot of people, this is critical. If you need something where the software is going to be stable and it's not going to change enormously in, uh, in over multiple years, then an Ubuntu LTS release is invaluable to you. And Ubuntu 18.4, by all counts, was an excellent release by the, uh, by the team at Canonical. Now, by comparison, Fedora doesn't have an LTS release, and that distribution is usually supported for around 12 to 15 months. 
So that means every year or so, you're going to have to upgrade. The good news is that upgrade path is usually very smooth, but it also does lead to an interesting development cycle in terms of Fedora is constantly, uh, is constantly developing at a fairly consistent pace, whereas Ubuntu will tend to slow down development of new features and, uh, and things like the community, the revised community theme, because they are trying to focus on stability for a long-term support release. Then once the long-term support release is out, they will start to accelerate their development again to focus on adding new features before the next uh, uh, LTS release comes around. So in some ways, it's almost a, a macro released schedule where they use their, uh, their interim releases, Ubuntu 18.10 and so on, as, uh, as almost like a test bed for the features that they will eventually add into the Ubuntu LTS release. Now in Fedora's case, they focus on just providing a stable, as stable as possible desktop software uh, on their workstation releases and ultimately knowing that a lot of those features are going to find their way downstream into RHEL and into, um, and into related projects like CentOS or CentOS. So folks, for me personally, uh, I would actually be leaning more towards Fedora using that as a daily driver for a release-based distribution at the present time than Ubuntu. And this is very specific to how I operate and what my needs are. And so your mileage is definitely going to vary, but I'm hoping that by pointing out some of the fundamental differences and also the kind of the nitpicky, itty bitty gritty stuff between these two distributions, I'm hoping that you'll be able to make an educated choice as to, into what is going to suit your needs best. Ultimately, that's what software is. It's a tool, go out, try it out, find what works best for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think about these two releases and where they sit in the Linux ecosystem. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you all in the very next video.